Hello everyone. Okay, so now we're going to talk about Venus being shamed. This is the Lajitarashta of Venus. So Lajita means shamed. Um, and so when you have this happens when you have Venus in the fifth house when it is also conjoined with Saturn, Mars, or the Sun. So that's one way that Venus can be said to be ashamed. And the other time is when Venus is with Sun, Saturn, or Mars, these same three cruel planets, and also with Rahu or Ketu. And that can be in any house or any sign. So that's how Venus gets shamed. And, you know, just so you know, that's how all the planets get their Lajitadi Avashta of shame. So anytime a planet is with those th Sun, Saturn, or Mars in the fifth house, it will be ashamed. Or whenever it's with those same three and also with Rahu or Ketu in any Varga, or sorry, any house. So this is a... Uh, this is a very, very interesting Avashta. It's very, very good to know in your practice. Um, and it does come up fairly often. And so anytime that you see a lot of planets conjunct with uh, Rahu or Ketu, they're like moving through the zodiac in transits. Usually this is happening. And this you'll actually notice that this is very relevant in transits as well. Now, how does this work? Okay, so Venus represents our... Kind of like our healthy pride it's one of the planets of rajas guna like i was saying mercury and venus the word rajas is the word that uh it literally means mist and it rep it symbolizes that which makes us think we are the doer you know in life because in really everything is just god doing everything in the true highest perspective of vedic astrology and so what is it that makes us feel like i am an individual and i'm doing this that's venus and mercury so Venus is a planet that you're supposed to feel like rewarded by like, ooh, I did that well, you know, or oh, I am lovable, I deserve love, you know what I mean? Or Mercury the same way, like, ooh, I handled that situation very skillfully and well, and that's something that I can feel good about. You know, this is, so a healthy Mercury and Venus will have that feeling. Um, a less healthy Mercury and Venus will have a harder time feeling a healthy pride and a healthy, you know, sense of, self-worth and just feeling like yeah okay I belong here and I did something useful and I'm valuable um, and so this is one of the ways that that can kind of get in the way or that can be harder for someone to feel that so um, when when so let's say starting with this this the crazy thing is that this plays out in so many different ways depending on the type of shame too so you can really get specific and you know I'm you know, no one's paying me to make these videos, so I'm not doing like super in-depth, uh, you know, classes. I'm not, this isn't like a course you're paying for, so I'm not going to do like tons of research on this. Um, but, you know, at another point later on, or if I ever wanted to, I could probably do like a whole video on each one of these. So let's take, for example, Mars and Rahu causing the shame. So Venus is conjunct Mars and Rahu in any sign. So, how would how can I put that? That's going to be something where basically like Mars is like your your energy, your passion, more like your lust. So when it comes to Venus, like what you like, your desires, your sexuality, with Rahu, one can have like very uncontrolled lust, very uncontrolled passions, uncontrolled sexuality that can get them into trouble a lot. And then later they feel ashamed about it. So that's one simple way this can happen. Another way that this can happen is that one's... Um, one's opinions, you know, and one's concepts are like Mars, your paradigms and viewpoints are Mars. And then Venus is, you know, how you get along with people and your ability to be diplomatic and all these things. And so when Mars is shaming Venus, one maybe can't do that and they can't communicate well to others and they're always trying to control everything and they, you know, they blow up when things don't go their way. They're extremely opinionated and controlling with their opinions and that causes them to like you know, hurt people in their life that they care about, Venus. Um, that is actually in the case in Larry David's chart, the comedian, the famous comedian who made Seinfeld and also Curb Your Enthusiasm. Uh, he has his Mars, Mars, Rahu, and Venus all in Gemini. And 
So Mars is starved, is miserable by being in Gemini alone. We haven't covered that Avashta yet. Um, and then Mars is also shaming and taking out its anger on Venus um, with that Rahu Venus Mars conjunction. And Gemini is a sign of how we communicate and assert ourselves. And so because of other good things in this chart, uh, he's been able to make this fortunate, make this, you know, make a living for him. But in his real life, he's you know, he's he's making jokes about his real life and how miserable he's been. You know what I mean? In his relationships and in his experiences, um, he's got Mercury as the Atmakarika, so he is uh, he does have a great ability to laugh and, you know, has that comedian quality to him to make light of it, and that certainly helped him. But that's definitely, seriously, like a, a difficult thing to deal with. You know what I mean? And I'm sure he's had to work on that a lot in his life. Um it's also really fascinating how comedians are always really troubled and I've studied the charts of a lot of comedians charts and they will take the difficult things in their chart, their difficult avashtas and use those um, to make jokes about. It's kind of interesting. It's like a form of alchemy that these people are doing. Um, now uh, that's so that's like one way that <clears throat> Venus will be shamed you know with Mars and Rahu there. <clears throat> Larry David, I don't know anything if he's had any like affairs or scandals or anything, but in that that's definitely a, a more common way that it can play out. Their passion can just get too high, and they can't control themselves, and they get themselves into trouble, obviously. Now, with Venus shamed by K2 and Mars, it can be suppressed a little bit more, because K2 tends to suppress things, so it can often manifest in the sense of like a pornography addiction, or an addiction to just like weird certain things, certain fetishes. Um something just more, you know, like more hidden um, in their life that they don't really like show as much, but it's still there. Um, but yeah, it shows that there's like a lot of like past life karmic needs to have some sexual experience, but there's like this martial, like intense, cruel, could be violent side of it. You know what I mean? So you'll find that like all these ones that involve Mars just across the board will bring in a lot more more violence in sexuality, more abuse, more of these like kind of things. Um, what's interesting too is that uh, I'm not saying anything's right or wrong. People do whatever they want to do in life. But what's funny is that um, if you get like especially when their moon is also involved or something and they're just comfortable with that, they could be like really abused or like in really bad situations and they think it's fine because in their mind like that's what their karma is like thinks it needs or is used to. And you can tell them like, yeah, you know, that's actually not what normally happens in relationships. And, you know, they might be upset by that, actually. It's kind of weird. Um, so, again, just indicating the need to balance out this this karma um, with Venus. Then, you know, uh, so, yeah, so Mars K2 shaming Venus, more of these hidden complexes, but still a lot of, like, uh, these more animalistic um, sides to their sexuality um, and how they deal with it can be tough, you know what I mean? Because they suppress it usually with K2. Um, then if it's just like just Mars and Venus in the fifth house, okay? For that, it's maybe just more shame overall around their like the use of their passion and their sexuality. So, and then it could be violent. So like there is some violent aspect that they like or that they their partner likes or something and that they feel ashamed of it or that their partner makes them feel ashamed for not liking it um, one or the other or something to that effect can be very common um, and they can it can usually indicate that they are either being too violent with the partner or the other is being too violent or abusive we could say or forceful or cruel you know these are all kind of similar to Mars um, Then, you know, if you get Saturn shaming Venus, um, again, this can also be a part of the other Avashas that I explained where Saturn is still being delighted and is being helped by Venus and Venus is still on some level getting some delight from Saturn, but it's more, it's, you know, there's a new thing. So it's kind of taking over and this is more of a shame quality that forms with this Avashas. Just so if it's like Venus and Saturn in the fifth house, then it could be... They don't feel like they have that heavy sense of Saturnian doubt and lack in this life with their relationships. They don't feel like they're worthy of ever having love and they feel ashamed of some for some reason. 
um, or they feel ashamed of something they did, you know, at some point in their life, and then that makes them feel like they're not worthy of being loved. Um, they can feel ashamed of just like feeling good and making the good choices that make them feel happy, you know. Um, older elder figures in their life could make them feel that way, you know. Um, they can just. Yeah, it can just tend to feel a lot more of a lack of love in general. And then that makes them feel like what's wrong with them. You know, this can manifest in a very in a variety of ways, actually. Um, but they'll that Saturn there throws off their ability to act healthy with their Venus a lot of the times, and so then they attract unhealthy things too. So it's tough. Um, so, you know, if you have that or really all these avashas, it just symbolizes the strong need to balance out your Rahu K2 karmas and so there's a lot you can do for that. I mean, and if you're studying astrology and you know your chart, you already probably know a lot of what you need to be doing. And you probably are doing it. Good job. <laughs> so um, while I'm saying these things, you know, it's, uh, these are, you're here to work on these things. You know what I mean? It's what, it's what they're here for. They'll go away as we go, get, go through them and work through them. So this is the next one I was going to mention was uh, Venus and Sun. So now... This uh, Venus and Sun in the fifth house, um, or when it's with Rahu Ketu, I know of one chart I looked at just before I made this video. Um, this person has Venus and Sun in the fifth house, and it's in Taurus. And so, you know, it's interesting because they're a Sun sign Taurus, which is always so, like, very commonly very goddessy type of woman, you know what I mean? Or very bohemian and earthy. And this woman's, like, very more dark and Capricorn and, like, thin and you know, very doubtful and like nervous, has this weird nervous energy. And it's like uh, her fifth house has that strong Venus there in its own sun, but it's still shamed by the sun. So she is like an incredibly talented artist, amazing artist. Like she just scribbles stuff and it's just like so profoundly beautiful. I've kept things she's scribbled, you know what I mean? Just because I've been like, wow, it's amazing. And she's so doubtful of it though, that she won't even like make like, you know, a big piece, she'll just be scribbling, you know what I mean? And, and she, she like, uh, the sun is authorities, and so, like, men and authorities um, have kind of, like, you can tell in her life, like, her father, a lot of figures have, like, kind of belittled her or made her feel, like, ashamed for just being a weirdo artsy person, maybe, or something. Um, and so, I wondered, like, why she wasn't more successful or better when I was first studying astrology. And this shame probably does it help to explain it. You know what I mean? Um, she's got some other weird issues with her Rahu and K2, but it's one of those things that like, wow, for her being so talented, she doesn't feel like she can um, like enjoy it. And like also even like connect to like, like Venus is just like how we have intercourse with life, like how we're relating with life. You know what I mean? And that sense of like I was saying of how feeling good about like what you do, it's like it's, gosh, it's so hard for her to feel that or she doesn't seem to easily feel that. So this is kind of a tough, tough avashta that she's dealing with. Um, you know, one can, authorities can make one, the sun authorities can make one feel ashamed of just wanting to have sex or just any of their sexual desires. Uh, it could be very, you know, healthy and good things like I think it is in this person's case. But for whatever reason, that's some karmic issue. Maybe in a past life, she was a man that, you know, suppressed her daughter, other people, you know, for and didn't really realize what she was doing. And so she's had to reincarnate in this life to be on the other end of that um, to make sure that she'll never, you know, do that again or something. I don't know. Um, doesn't easily give, let you be validated with Venusian things so you can feel really belittled by people that you love or respect. Um you know, things of that sort. And um, it can also indicate that your soul is like maybe trying to separate from more of a Venusian side of life through its many lives. That's a possibility. Sorry for moving my eye. And um, now when we talk about Venus, uh, when Rahu is shaming it, when the Rahu is involved, you can get someone who is going to be a lot more subject. So any other planet doing it involved with what I was mentioning of them. But then when Rahu's involved, they're more. Uh, they're actually going to be more subjective to manipulative women, to attracting. And this is somewhat true with Venus and Rahu in general. Just attracting deceitful women, manipulative women. Uh, if it is in a woman's chart, 
attracting, making choices, and attracting other women as friends and stuff that can be manipulative, deceptive, uh, having a diff really difficult time making right choices that actually are where your heart's centered because the one hasn't experienced that enough with Rahu there. That's what that means. And so they just feel ashamed later when the things didn't go right. You know, when they're like, oh, I regret this. Why did I do this? You know what I mean? Um, there's like, it's like really saying that there's not much experience from them in choosing wisely. So for a man in choosing a good woman and for a woman in choosing all things, you know what I mean? And choosing her lifestyle across the board. Um, so yeah, that can be a pretty tricky situation. Um, it one just, their Venus, their Venus energy can just get out of control and in more easily because they haven't been working on it. Um, I know of one person who has this with uh, Sun, Venus, and Rahu together, um, also in Gemini, um, and in their 12th house, and they, uh, they, they were sexually abused by like an older person, and the person kind of manipulated them into thinking they were wanting to do it, and they were into it as well. And uh, that, that, you know, that was sort of like something that definitely affected the, the person. And um, it wasn't like really, really bad sort of thing. But <clears throat> yeah, it was sort of an issue that, you know, he def the person's definitely, um, you know, was kind of affected by and, and, and suffered from and was traumatized by that. Doesn't mean that that's going to happen like every time you see that in a chart. Um, and, you know, that person also does have, like, very strange ideas about sex and um, relationships as, as well. And, you know, um, so if you see that in a placement, you, you kind of want to caution the person that, like, you might want to get some outside advice on what you think about a healthy relationship, how it should go, how it should flow. You might want to ask another opinion, you know, get an outside opinion if your wife or your girlfriend or someone is doing things that sort of, you know, make other people go, hmm? You know, and, and not really understand why. <clears throat> and if, uh, and then, you know, when K2 is involved in the relationships, it may not, it doesn't indicate as much that they have not had as much experience. It means that they've had a lot of experience and they have a lot of expectations. And so they'll feel ashamed when they don't meet those expectations constantly. Um, and so they don't, or they don't put the amount of work and effort into the relationship that they thought it should be taking. And that can also be the case with just Venus K2 conjunct. Um, so that's, that's really a very interesting thing. So they'll feel like this, this more shame or discontent um, with the relationship when K2 in, is involved with Venus. So there's a lot of different ways that this can play out, you know, um, and there's a lot more that we could say about each one of these placements. It's very interesting. Um, if you have this going on, then it means that you have a lot more karma to balance out with your Venus, you know what I mean? And you have more work to do with that regard. Um, don't feel hopeless about it. Um, and, you know, that's all of what, you know, yoga is about and Hinduism. And, you know, we're doing Jyotish here. It's a spiritual art and science. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about just getting you to go and transcend this karma. And so, you know, all the yoga paths, that's what they're for. So just in a nutshell, do yoga. <laughs> you know, if you want to get more specific on that, what you should do, what paths, this, that, you should get a reading for that. Um, okay, thanks, y'all. Take care.